Welcome to Unleashed. And don't forget to join us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. Here are the guys. Welcome to Unleashed. I'm joined now with, what should I call you, Phil? Yep. Okay, Phil. <laughs> Very simple. Nice t-shirt, Phil. Nice t-shirt? Nice t-shirt. Iron Maiden. Look at that. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 And joining him is someone who's never heard an Iron Maiden song in his life, Andrew Fantasia. Andrew, what up? They have that song, To Become One, right? That's Iron Maiden. That's Spice Girls. That's oh, okay. <laughs> They're similar They're in style. I always mix them up. <laughs> yeah. They're very similar. Iron Maiden all the way. Phil, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. How's, How the, you how's it going over there? Uh, in your good. woods, good. All right, everything. Uh, family, all good. Everybody's healthy now with what's going on in the world. Family's good. Family's good. Uh, the outside world is not so good, but in my very small, small section of the world, it's okay. Yeah. Your center of the universe is fine. That's great because yeah, uh, it's things are heating up and it's escalating quickly. And the the more everybody takes the precautions and stays indoors and hangs out and plays uh, with their action figures all day. Uh, the quicker we can all go back to whatever the new norm is going to be. So I'm glad everybody's doing well on your area. Andrew, how about you? Everybody good? Are you it's driving your good. mom nuts? Is your mom ready to kick you out? Is she not yet? Well, <laughs> if, if she has, she's doing a great job of keeping it bottled up. Um, no, I went shopping yesterday. All was well. Uh, it's it's crunch time for Canada. You know, we're reaching mm-hmm. that point where it's like everything's really important. Uh, like it's fever pitch, no pun intended. Uh, so James, stop inviting me to parties. We need to stay indoors. I was a little disappointed you didn't come over on Saturday when I had that big gathering of three and a half people. Cause now it's in Ontario. Uh, they just, was it Sunday, Saturday? They just said no more of gatherings than five people at a time. Of course, if your house has more than five people, that's fine. But if <laughs> you can't go anywhere with more than five, uh, five people. So that's, uh, that's huge. And you know what? The numbers here versus uh, a lot of other uh, countries isn't, isn't uh, as staggering. So I, I think it's important uh, what they're doing now to kind of nip it in the butt and hopefully stop this thing from spreading. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Star Wars and take your minds off of that real world stuff yeah. uh, and have some yeah. fun with it. And I have to say, Phil's here right now. And the very first person I ever uh, knew who saw The Rise of Skywalker uh, you know, because everyone saw the critics are saying this and random, random person on Twitter saying this. But the first person that I ever spoken to who ever saw the rise of Skywalker is sitting right here, uh, virtually next to me. And that's Phil. And, uh, do you remember what that email said to me? You sent me an email. It was 7am um, because of the time difference. Yeah. I, so I would have seen it, although it would have been on the same day. Yeah. Uh, we're like 12 <laughs> hours ahead. So I actually yeah. saw it. Um, when did I see, I saw it about six o'clock in the evening so it would have been six o'clock in the morning your time yeah. so i would have come out sort of in the morning before you'd seen it and i remember just like walking in the car park to the cinema just typing this message like i love it <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're gonna love it yeah. you're gonna love it it's incredible and just like obviously i'm not giving any any um yeah. all his way because i knew that everybody else you know hadn't seen it yet so i was like it's amazing. You're going to love it. I loved it. And I can't wait to see it again. And then yeah. it said dot, 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 Ray Palpatine. And I was like, what? <laughs> it, definitely, it definitely did not. No, definitely did not. I was very, very careful not to say anything. <laughs> in the but I just wanted to. So I was so excited when I left the yeah. theater. I was like, well, I need to say something to somebody. Because like <laughs> my mom, she doesn't care. You know, <laughs> my daughter's two. So she doesn't have any idea. <laughs> Uh, so I was like, well, I need to tell somebody that cares. My brother is like the hugest Star Wars fan. You know, he's 10 years older than me. So he grew up, he was, you know, watching mm. it in the cinema. The first time. So uh, he'd already seen it in England. Um, uh, I think, well, he was actually watching it as I was watching it kind of thing. I think it worked out. Um, but I was like, I need to say something. So I was like, I have to send this email. And I'm, obviously I was had to be careful not to, sort of give anything away but yeah yeah um, i was pretty and i think i remember you texting me back like we're about to go something. yeah that's good i read it and i wasn't reading any reviews or anything but i, I appreciate that email because 
you know, you can read what critics say, like I said, and what other people on Twitter say, but it's the people who have like the same taste as you and you understand and you know where their head's at going in. Those are the, those are the, the, I guess the reviews you can call them that I appreciate. And, and I knew how much you like Star Wars. And when you said that, I was like, I was excited. It got me even more pumped than I already was. And yeah. I told Andrew and Brock about the email, uh, not going into specifics, but I was like, I can't wait to get in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then that was uh, I just I remember when the when the movie ended, and now I've seen all I've seen I've seen eight Star Wars movies first run in the theater. The special editions don't count because we already knew, and I've seen them all. And the the, the reaction after Force Awakens and Rise of Skywalker leaving the theater were the two most positive experiences I've ever experienced watching a movie. The way that they. Uh, the audience was excited uh, and happy and, j- and filled with joy as they left. Attack of the Clones was more quizzical. <laughs> the audience was like, what? Was that Was that acting or was that a stick? Um, I love yeah. Attack of the Clones. Don't start with me. Uh, but anyway, uh, so thanks for joining us here as we talk something that I would – because I've watched it like eight or nine times now on digital. And I know you just recently saw it too, right? I saw it again, yeah. Yeah, and Andrew, you, you refuse to watch this movie. Yeah, I hate lightsabers, man. You don't like Star uh, Wars. <laughs> no, I I don't. Uh, I'm not a digital kind of guy, so I'll, I'll wait till it's uh, on a Blu-ray disc of some kind. I think it's or released on Blu-ray. Uh, I heard laser laser VHS. I don't know. Something. I've heard that uh, if you bought it off of Disney something something that it arrived on Friday to certain people. Oh. So the Blu-ray is coming soon. It might even be. I think they actually bumped oh, it, it up. That's it. Uh, rise. Oh, I'm going to type in Rise of Sky. I think it's the 31st. I was pretty sure it's the end, right at the end of the month. But I Ooh. think they might have bumped it up because of what's going on. I mean, can you even yeah. go anywhere to buy it? I guess uh, Walmart's still open. <laughs> Shops open, so unless you pre-ordered it on Amazon. Yeah, and I, I've been wary now with. Um, I find Disney in particular is guilty of this, but in Canada, DVDs are weird because sometimes they look normal, but sometimes the buy bilingual aspect of canada gets way too out of hand and the dvd box just looks that's gross. awful it's yeah like look up look up the canadian dvd of toy story 4 mm. it is garbage like the way it like it's like the french title is like half the picture and then the english title is like squeezed i'm like what did you do uh so it, they tend to the disney ones lately have been like that they tend to just look really aesthetically just like yuck and because i'm a collector of dvds i like them to look nice so what i've been doing lately uh just with movies that i really love like Endgame, for example i ordered it i had to pay more i had to pay like 40 bucks for it but i ordered it from the u.s and got it chipped up because i was like you know what at least the box is just the end game poster and it looks nice and it's not like here where it's like End game, the end game. Did you hear four? Yeah. <laughs> Did you do you remember <laughs> uh, I speak French if you if you didn't understand <laughs> <laughs> the the in the early two thousands when DVDs first started coming up, they used to have the the English on the front and then you could reverse the flap and on the back it would be in French. But they would still have the French on both sides. It would still be like really small on the English side. And it's just like uh so yeah, I uh Every time I would go to to the United States of America, I'd pick up my own Blu-ray or whatever. And no disrespect to the French, but I don't need seven different languages on on one DVD. Especially when you're reading the back, you're like, but there was beautiful artwork on the American version. And all I got is a bunch of text telling me what the story is about in three languages. But anyway, enough about that. Exactly. Uh, but I, I rewatched it again, and we watched it again uh, with uh, nieces and nephew, like I said. And I, and I watched it myself a few times. And I watched it back-to-back with Last Jedi, which was a lot of fun. Finally, because now Last Jedi has an ending. It's phenomenal. So The Force Awakens actually has an ending, I should say. This, these movies end now. So it was great to watch. And something that caught my eye, my um, caught my attention this time, which I think I kind of, you know, it, it, it wasn't that it was like eluded me or anything, but I never really focused on it. That I want to talk to you guys about. And that's Janna and her Stormtrooper crew. If you remember the trailer for The Rise of Skywalker, it's Finn saying like, it's a feeling. It's an instinct. And he's talking about the Force. And then in the movie, he's talking to Janna about that. And they're talking about how her and her her crew kind of left uh, the First Order 
on their own and they couldn't really explain why they just had this feeling and finn explains that it's the force and everybody's all obsessed with jenna and lando jenna and lando are going to go off on an adventure and find out who she is but what if finding out who she is is actually finding out that she is force sensitive and maybe they could use jenna and her fellow stormtroopers and possibly finn who knows uh, to create a new Jedi Order. Ray could be involved. Ray doesn't have to be involved, whatever. But do you guys think, Andrew, I'll start with you because you're on the screen right now. Do you think there's a possibility that Disney Plus could give us that type of show? And would you be interested in that? I think that's a neat concept. I mean, Finn was unique where he, you know, broke free of the, the First Order shackles and everything, and we loved them for it. And then along comes Episode Nine, and there's a whole bunch of Stormtroopers who are like that. And yeah, it's kind of neat to think that maybe it's because there's a little bit of force sensitivity to these folks and it clued them in that what they were doing was not right. So I like that idea and it kind of sets the stage for, let's face it, every Star Wars uh, expanded universe junkie is in love with the idea of the Jedi Academy, you know, mm -hmm. Luke's Jedi Academy and now Ray's Jedi Academy, which we've all just kind of collectively assumed is going to be a thing. I know. It's just so funny. It's like, there's always a Jedi Academy. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like, it's so, it's this thing that it's like, everybody just kind of uh, like, just nods their head to it. It's yeah. like, he, he comments like, so now Ray can start her Academy. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah. Like there's no contesting to it. No. Um, and there, there you go. There's a batch of students. Uh, we Jana's proven that she's capable, you know, she's got her bow and arrow, the coolest weapon coolest black series they've made for that uh, movie so far. So there's a lot of awesome characters to pluck from and we didn't get to know them all. So you can make up other new awesome ones mm -hmm. and introduce them. Uh, but I think that that's a great way to a get this Academy thing off the ground and make it real and B give these characters something to do besides just kind of be there as a plot device in the movie, like give them more room to breathe. Phil, how about you? Um, I would like to see a one-off standalone, it's not going to be, probably not a movie, but, well, not a, not a theatrical release, but it might be a, a, net, a not Netflix, what's it called? Disney Plus. So we don't have it yet. <laughs> uh, um, one-off Disney Plus movie about that throwaway line that she says, you know, about the fact that they all rose up. I think it would make a really good one-off story just to see that happen. Um, to see almost like Rogue One is a throwaway. I mean, that literally that whole Rogue One story comes from a throwaway line in in A New Hope, right? Or whatever it was, one yep. of them. I think A New Hope, right? Um, I would like to see a one-off story about her story of that group of people who decided, well, this stormtrooper business is it's not very good so we're gonna go and break away and i think that that story would be a good one-off whether it or not it will be like a long-term thing i don't think so but so, so you I want like, like a prequel story to jenna's I, I would like to just see a feature-length story about that that line that she says you know she was also in that kind of group and they decided to defect mm -hmm. i would like to see a yeah, just what just a one-off story really about that. I don't think you're going to get a long-term series about Jenna. Okay, but do you, okay, uh, fair point, and I I mostly probably agree with you, even though I don't want to, but I think I do. I don't think we will. But do you guys think that? If I'll start with you. Do you think that's a mistake on Disney's part? Because look at Avengers; they had Endgame, and Endgame ends, and then they're like, by the way, you're going to get Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and you're going to get uh, WandaVision, and you're going to get She-Hulk, and you're going to get all these shows because of Endgame, because of this Infinity Saga. Whereas with Star Wars, you're like you're going to get uh, the Mandalorian and Obi Wan, and uh, you're going to get spinoffs of Mandalorian. Uh, but Rise of Skywalker has has left this door open for all of these little stories to to be told on a smaller scale on a smaller screen. Like the Janna story you could go. I think Oshi would be a great story. The Jedi killer hunter, relic hunter, Sith relic hunter, whatever the heck he was. That kind of story. There's all these little stories. Do you think it's a mistake on on the part of Lucasfilm right now to not have uh, this game plan of of these stories on their slate? Um, possibly. Uh, I, I I do. I I do feel they're not telling us though. I I, I think that they. You look at the people working there, 
And as much as people slate Bob Iger and slate Kathleen Kennedy, like these people are super successful. Yes. To say they haven't got a game plan, I think, is is um, naive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they probably do have a game plan, and they're just they don't want to lay all their cards on the table. If you, I mean, imagine if they lay all their cards and say, "Well, this is the next ten years of Star Wars," like. People will be gr- massively excited for like the first year, and then it will be like, "Oh yeah, that I remember that one. That's coming out, isn't it?" Yeah. I think they've got to release it as a slow, a slow, almost like a slow drip, mm-hmm. okay. because otherwise people might start to get bored. And I, although there are, will be the hardcore fans that will never get bored of Star Wars, they, I don't know, I, I do feel like they don't want to lay their whole deck out straight away. And these people aren't stupid; they know what they're doing. They know how to make movies, and you've only got to look at their back catalogue of successful movies, and I think they will make it a success. They've had a turbulent start, shall we say, but <laughs> I, I think now that that... I think, I, just, I think the worst thing they did was keep it in in that saga. I think like, if they just said, yeah. right, we're starting again from day one, maybe it would have been different. But I think now that's gone, they're able to create their own stories, and I, I think they have a game plan. I... They have to have a game plan, surely. <laughs> yeah, I think they do. I think, and and uh, I think they will do in the long term. They will make the right decisions. I have got confidence that they're going to make the right decisions. Andrew, do you think that they would have been more beneficial to a character like Jana, where if we walked into the Rise of Skywalker with knowledge that that you know Kathleen Kennedy or somebody at Lucasfilm came out and said. We are working on a Jana Jedi Jana Lando story uh, for Disney Plus. Do you think it would have been more beneficial to a character like her in the Rise of Skywalker? Like she would have been accepted a little bit more. You mean if they announced that ahead of time? Yeah, if they're like, because they announced, you know, like let's just say they're like, oh, you guys like Jana? We're working on this Jana story. Because, look, her character, if she died in The Rise of Skywalker, no, no one would care that much because she's in that one movie. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's almost like you get, you're like, we're going to introduce this character, Jana, and she's going to be mm-hmm. living on in Star Wars for longer. Yeah, see, I mean, to preface this answer, like, if you don't know already, I love Rise of Skywalker, but my heart lives in the parallel universe where Disney let them stretch it into two movies. <laughs> Because for, to me, that's the the perfect Rise of Skywalker is is, is uh, a story that got room enough to breathe over like four hours, and I think that um, in that perfect world, Jana just sort of showing up at this point in the story at the eleventh hour is not so much the eleventh hour anymore because there's all that more room to breathe. So if they had said beforehand, yeah, look, you're, you're getting this character, but you're getting more of her afterwards. I think it would have helped some people. I think it would have helped the people who were primarily the people who were fans of Janna and who felt kind of shortchanged. And I think what's going to, whatever they end up doing with her, it's sort of like she is this generation's wicked. You know, you introduce yeah. wicked, he comes in an hour into the final movie and people love him. And then what happens? Well, we God, we people love him. Quick, here, Ewoks cartoon, go. Uh, Caravan of Courage, go. Um, and I, I feel like Jana is gonna fall, and Zori uh, are gonna fall under that same category where it's like, oh my God, people people love these two. We we only gave them like an hour of screen time. What do we do? Uh, cartoons, go here, quick backstory. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that conversation with Lando was like a real last minute like reshoot thing that they had. Where they're like, let's. You know, we didn't have this idea to have Jan at first um, become, you know, move on afterwards. But people are on set talking about how cool this character is. Let's add this to kind of let the audience know we're not done with her. See, I think the the line with Lando at the end more alludes to stuff that not in the movie with Lando losing his his child and trying mm. to figure, and knowing that she's a, a an ex uh, stormtrooper and how he knows that she was taken from her family and i think really in the context of that scene he's he's talking more about her and her entire battalion than just her specifically uh but that's what i think i think for zori for me personally i think the difference between zori and janna is is exactly what you said though that scene with lando at the end alludes to more whereas zori i feel like she has a complete arc and she's done 
Like I love Zora. I think Zora is a, a is a a stronger character than Jenna as a whole. She's a she's a, full, a little bit more full uh, because I think she has her ending is complete when she ends up on what's that planet called? Dakar Four. Uh, oh, New Dakar. Well, it's called New Dakar. When she's on New Dakar. She's like, she kind of gives like the head nod to Poe or the shakes her head to Poe. And we kind of get it. Like th- she's done. Like her part is done. She is super cool. Uh, Phil, anything you want to add? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I, I, I did think that line in the end of the uh, Rise of Skywalker was maybe they were like, well, we'll see how this goes across. You know, maybe yeah. people want to see more from her. Uh, the only, you know, I think you're not going to get them together again because Lando's or, or Billy D. Williams is not going to do anything else, is he? Um so she would have to do it on her own, and it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'd like to. I mean, I'd like to see it because I'd like to see any new Star Wars, but uh, I would rather see the story of her before the, the rise of Skywalker. The mutiny, yeah. Uh, that story of the mutiny and and stuff. If she was in that, I'd be all over that. Whereas another story in the future is like. Yeah, it's you know she's going to go and find her family and things. It's like those things that you don't need to resolve. Mm-hmm. In movies sometimes you don't need to resolve things because it gives you that option to think in your mind. Oh, I wonder what happened here. You know, yeah, that, that need to be. There's not a problem that needs to be solved. I think the reality well, is she'd never find her family either because yeah, yeah <laughs> because I think the I haven't read the the novelization yet, but I believe it says that they were taken before they're even old enough to think. Like they're like less than they're around a year old or less i believe like they're basically newborns that the first order is stealing from from yeah. the, from the new republics uh, the high ranking officials uh so there's no way to ever track down who 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 jana's uh biological family ever is um so for for me though i i would i would be down with watching the jana jedi uh going forward a new jedi because i think not theatrically, but on Disney Plus, I would because I think it would be a lot of fun. It could be a fun series watching uh, this new crew of, of misfits learning the ropes of the Force, becoming one with the Force at, in the end, and, and and learning lightsabers. Maybe maybe we see live action them trying to track down their own personal kyber crystals, and we go we get all that through these characters who, like Andrew said, we don't really know their names of half of them. They're in some of them are in the the, the visual the visual dictionary. But you get them all back. None of them are massive names, you know. I don't think they're, you know. I'm sure they're all hungry for work, so you get them a job. We could do that, and then that would yeah, wet Naomi out. Not what? No, Miyaki's probably not. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> we all you know, right. Yeah, I mean she, that's 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 another thing about this is like you're not going to recast a lot of these characters no. unless you actual actual. It's like um, the Ben Solo. You know, I'm quite happy. With the ending of the rise of skywalker I probably yeah, might be any ones but to bring ben you know to bring adam driver back now like yeah it's yeah I don't think it's gonna happen i don't think he's gonna do it i don't think you need to do it i think it's that thing of you know that's the end like that is the end i think if somebody br- uh, approached him with a story that fit his character the way Han Solo, they fit Han Solo in it. He might, and he's older. He might be more inclined to come back. But I just, yeah, I'm with you. I think he's, I think he's yeah. fine. I think he's fine with, uh, with leaving he's it right. the way it is. Yeah, I think that's where he he's is. He's Oscars and, or you know, almost winning Oscars. Yeah, his Academy Awards. He's great in Black Klansman, by the way. I don't yeah. know if anyone's seen. It. Lucasfilm will be like, we don't think you want to come back for another go, and he'll be like, but I do. But I do. But I do. But I do. I can't believe they took that shirt down. I'm still <laughs> so random. Have you seen Mary's story? Yeah, saw Mary's story. Have you seen it? I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. really good in that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I think he's he's probably going on to some serious. Yeah, he's uh, he's, he's not going <laughs> to when he needs the paycheck. He'll return yeah. to a blockbuster. But until then, yeah, until then. Yeah. Until then, yeah. I always remember uh, Edward Burns, filmmaker Edward Burns. He's like, he does his own independent movies. They cost like a million dollars to make, and he's like, I do these movies, and then uh, he goes, I do the the big budget one just so I could pay for that one later on, and that's how that's yeah. how they do it, right? So when Adam Driver needs that paycheck, you'll see him in Star Wars Episode Ten: Ben Returns. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I do think though, if if somebody in a few years, ten years, whatever, pitched an idea like, hey. Uh, and it's a solid script, like, but we need 
Ben Solo, Kylo Ren to return. I think he's the kind of actor that if if there's credibility in that role, he would mm. consider it for sure. I don't think he's Harrison Ford in the 80s where he's done with Han Solo. <laughs> he's not done with Kylo Ren, Ben Solo at all. I think he's still... Ten years he would he might yeah, yeah like years. if somebody approaches him and it's proper and it's it's and it's it is credible and it's not just a gimmick like I'm back to sell more toys not that they're making toys as we discussed yeah. before recording I'm back to sell toys now yeah <laughs> that's what I think I for me like I said though I just um you know it seems Rogue One Solo Mandalorian all these spinoffs I mean obviously Obi One will be different but there's no Jedi in these at all so. If it, if Jenna if Jedi Jenna stormtroopers are the way to to get us uh, lightsaber action uh, more than just a black black saber dark saber uh, black saber I'm rogue one in my mind then um, then I'm all for it that's what I'll say I think High Republic's going to have a lot of lightsabers yes, but that's only that's oh, yeah. books and comics though right like for now I, for now for now yeah do you yeah. think they're going to expand into sure. Disney? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> They must have put, I mean, they're already planning out storylines and concepts. I think once they release those and figure out which characters are liked and which characters are, there's a base behind and people want to learn more about them, for sure they're going to get, that's going to come on Disney Plus at least. And you know what, James, you mentioned the the Darksaber just now. And I think that there's a really good um, like mechanic that Star Wars is starting to use more and more. Um, Phil, you mentioned how, you know, there, there's things like, okay, Jana's family, will she ever find it? You know, things like that, that are always like unresolved, that the answer is not super duper important. You know, it's not a meaty answer. It's just like, yeah, maybe she'll find them. Maybe she won't. And I think when it comes to those kind of things in Star Wars, the smartest thing that they can do over at Lucasfilm is to say, okay, here are like two questions that fans are answering that aren't really all that important. Instead of being like, okay, let's make this one a show and let's make this one a comic, why don't we add those questions as like ingredients in a better, bigger soup? Like the dark saber. A lot of people are like, where's that dark saber ended up? It doesn't really matter. But you know what? Here's this Mandalorian story we're telling, and somewhere in the middle of that story, we're gonna add that ingredient and you get to learn where the dark saber is too. If they have like this really cool post episode nine cartoon or comic or something that's all about ray and poe and finn and that pizza place on andor that they're going to own so help me god there will be uh opportunity in there for them to uh throw in the little the little Jana things and the little lando things and other things that are interesting but not essential and uh it, it makes it all the better because it's it's related to this nicer thicker soup you know i think that that is something that lucasfilm can totally do more of the only thing with that is you have to know what you're doing from the get-go <laughs> yeah, right yeah. there has to be a game plan right from the beginning like oh we have all these um and i think to phil's point that he mentioned earlier is they were so worried about episode seven and continuing the story that maybe they should have i think though i think they're in a damned if you do damned if you don't scenario but i think starting fresh it's impossible to win yeah but you know i think i think they should have focused on Mm. oh well personally i think and like i like the sequel trilogy um but i think what they should have just done was been like this is a new story about ray and luke is old and han is old and they're all gonna die but this is about ray and finn like if they should have just focused on them taking taking they should have said the skywalker saga ended at return of the jedi now moving yeah. on to ray the ray saga is what i think and i think fans when you do that fans are they approach it a little bit differently i think uh, mentally their mentality mm. changes um yeah i think yeah, like you said though they are in a no win situation yeah. because whoever they whatever they do like somebody's <laughs> like it. and you know the people that don't like it are more expressive than the people that do like yeah. it because they're just like oh, i like this movie and that's it it's like when you but go to like, a restaurant right the people that are happy they never yeah. express it like the people that are ticked never, off yeah, yeah. 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 exactly you like, knew that the fandom was going to hell when people complained that the font was or the shading on the scroll crawl was a little bit different in the force awakens that's when you knew it was going to hell it was oh, like oh, i noticed the yellow was a little bit different how dare jj yeah. and then ryan johnson know. came in with a lightsaber and killed all the younglings childhoods and yeah. that ruined our lives and i'll never forgive then- i'll never forgive disney for buying lucasfilm 
Never. No, but I mean, yeah, like you can't. You, you, <laughs> they're in an impossible situation where, you know, people say, "Oh, it's ruined my childhood" or whatever, like, which is ridiculous. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Say that people think now, like, we can't even go outside now. I know. Like, we <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, I, mean, I don't know if you know this, but this is this is because this is of the Last problem. Jedi. This is because this of is, the Last Jedi. Yeah. yeah. This is an actual problem. Yeah. This in is. The world. Yeah. There's oh, probably is- a group out there somewhere who's like, "Last Jedi caused coronavirus." Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is the real sort of. A, this is a thing that matters, yeah. right? Seriously, like, and these are just they, entertainment. Yeah, after the crawl, they scroll down and scroll of you know instead of scrolling up or whatever. You know, like the, when the planet comes in. I think Ryan Johnson changed that right for the first time. No, uh, Attack of the Clones. He zoomed in rather than oh rather than right yeah, go yeah. down. I can't remember anyway, but like those things don't for sure. But you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it, th- these are meant for entertainment purposes. They're meant to have fun. They're yeah, meant to absolutely. distract you from what's going on outside. Sure. And if you look at them a little too seriously, then you know maybe you know watch a movie like uh, American History X or something because that's yeah. that's where you should be. These are yeah. like this is for um, fun. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think I think they'll do the good thing in in the end. I think. Um, they must have so many good people, and especially with um, Dave Filoni and, and uh-huh. you know, writing what he's done with The Mandalorian. He deserves a chance to, to, to do something feature okay. film. Well, we may have to talk about that because I think this Ahsoka coming into Mandalorian is really opening the door for Dave Filoni to show run his own series. But that is a topic maybe for next Monday. Uh, we'll wrap it up here. So everyone agrees Jana should be a Jedi and I should be directing the pilot episode. So send... <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what just whatever star wars you give me i'm fine with all right yeah. uh let's uh, wrap it up phil thanks so much for joining us here on unleashed on this monday morning uh where we're all locked inside hopefully everybody had fun talking along with us anything you want to say before we say goodbye me yeah um no not really <laughs> stay inside stay inside and wash your hands wash your hands fantasia i i can't top what Phil said earlier, I'm just going to quote him because that needs to be hung up in a frame where he said, people saying it ruins your childhood, that's ridiculous. We can't even go outside right now. That yeah, sums yeah. it all up. This man. is literally <laughs> ruining people's childhoods. This is, ruining, this is literally ruining people's yeah, childhoods. This is, yeah. this yeah. is what ruining Actually. childhood. Yeah, for real. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is unfortunate. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you both so much for joining uh, me today on Unleashed on this Monday morning. Unleashed today at 12 p.m. We, we will be announcing the winner or the new tra- the winner, the new contest. Uh, Andrew's <laughs> excited about that. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, like Phil said, stay inside, wash your hands, be safe. Like This will pass. It just is going to take time. It's going to take effort and it is going to suck, but it is what it is. And we are going to be here uh to hang out with you guys as much as possible. So live chats through every single one. And this Saturday, Saturday, Saturday is, is it April 4th on Saturday? Oh, I think it is. That's my birthday. Yeah. No, April 4th on Phil's birthday. We're doing. Uh, hang on, hang on. When's my birthday? Is Monday. It? No. What day is this day? <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Night. The first. Your birthday's on the first. All right, we'll give you yeah. a special shout out then. Uh, that's in a couple of days because today's Monday. Uh, on April fourth, right here, we'll be doing Star Wars Celebration Orlando Revisited. We're going to look back at Star Wars Celebration Orlando. Uh, it'll be like I think it's like two and a half to three hours long live chat with it. We're going to take you through our, our whole experience. You're going to see us standing in line to get in. You're going to see our reactions to the panel, day recaps, everything, everything that we posted during that time. We're going to have up in one giant video, so you can hang out with us and enjoy Star Wars Celebration the following Saturday, which would be the uh 11th will be chicago star wars celebration chicago andrew fantasia is going to take you through that journey and then the following saturday uh the 18th is going to be a special rebel scum celebration of our own which is uh, i'm excited for that but that's in that's in three weeks four weeks from from now so that's like a month away we might even not even be isolated we will be in isolation but uh, we're having a lot of fun we want you guys to stay inside stay safe stay healthy and as phil said wash your hands all right everyone thanks for watching i'm james that's andrew that's phil and until next time may the force of others be with you 
Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.